Mike Inessa. Welcome to another episode of Car Stories. Here we are at AMS up in Stowe uh, on West High Street in Pottstown. I'm with Denny wright Nower and Ron Wilson, and we're dynoing Big Red's new motor. 327 cross ram solid camshaft. It's a fresh motor. We built it at the shop. The machine work was all done here at AMS. It's in the dyno room, and what a dyno is, is a um, controlled facility to run the engine, tune the engine under a load. It measures horsepower, it measures torque, and it saves you a lot of time in tuning and setting up the engine once it's in the car. So what we're doing here today is we're gonna run the motor, um, try to set the timing, set the carburetors, and get as much horsepower and as much torque as we can out of this little 327. So stay tuned and you're gonna make some noise today. Seventy-two, no power valve. And what we're doing right now is Denny, Denny right now, the owner of AMS since 1972, he is putting in the information of what's in this motor. Jet size, carburetor size, camshaft. That all goes into the computer uh, so we can record changes and things we want to do, especially the jet sizes on this cross ram intake. I'm sure we're going to have to change a couple jets. All right, now we're in the diner room. And uh, as you can see, it's set up to run the engine. Uh, we got our headers on it. We got sensors in all the cylinders for lean conditions. And it measures the fuel. And up here's uh, water, it simulates a radiator and antifreeze. And um, it's basically how it works. You're, you're hooked up to monitors, oil temperature, oil pressure. There's your radiator. There's your sensors that measure the fuel ratio. Uh, ignition system simulated, fuel system, flywheel. That unit there measures the torque, and it spits it to the computer in the other room. Of course, exhaust goes out. We got two fans to keep everything cool. Uh, fuel pumps with different types of fuel in it. This one's going to be running on Sunoco High Octane 93 pump gas, not a race gas motor. Uh, Big Red's old motor was 14 to 1, and that gasoline is about $18 a gallon right now. So this one's going to make, hopefully, uh, a lot of horsepower on pump gas that you can buy at any gas station. So very expensive piece of equipment. And... Uh, like I said, in this application with the two carburetors and everything that's going on, it's well worth running on the dyno. So stay tuned, and we're going to be starting her up soon. Okay, we got Denny right now behind the controls here in the diner room. Starting her up. We got her running. She's got fuel pressure, oil pressure. So watch the screen there, and we're going to see some torque and horsepower specs. The big thing up there, of course, is the RPM. That's how many uh, revolutions per minute. You can see she's idling about 1,200 RPM. We got Colin Montgomery here in the background helping Denny. We got Ron Wilson. And of course, we got Gus on the TV there or the camera. Watch the RPM. and she was missing a little bit. So now, got to figure out what was going on there. But sounds good, sounds strong. All right, 385 is the best. So what do we got, Denny, on the first pull? 385 uh, horsepower. And looks like torque. Uh, 
Okay, there's the specs we got off the first pull. Like I said, she was missing a little bit up top. All these numbers you're seeing on the screen tell us at different RPMs, what horsepower, and uh, what torque she's making, oil pressure temperature. Uh, you can see it there on the screen. There's a lot of numbers to study. So now what Denny has to do is study these numbers and figure out what changes we're gonna make, uh, jetting, timing, and uh, figure out if we can pull another pull up to 7,500. We'd like to pull up to 75 um, and see where the horsepower is. It might pick up a, you know, more horsepower to higher RPM. First change I would make would be uh, jetting. Put the, um, what do you got, 66s? With, with uh, 6.5 power valve in the front, 72s in the back with no power valve. All right, let's jump to 60, I'm gonna jump to 70s, we're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He's, from the numbers that he studied, it's showing that the motor's running lean, not enough fuel. Uh, very common problem with these carburetors and this intake and, you know, uh, so the first thing we're going to do is try some jets and see if we can get it through. Just do the front. Yep. We'll do, do the front. front first. Put 70, 70 jets in the front, leave the power valve alone. Yep, leave the power valve alone. Leave the yeah, back. It, go, it didn't even want to go up to 7. Right. So, right. for that. Yep, yeah, first change is... No back jets. No, I wouldn't change the back jets yet. Okay. All right. So one thing at a time. We're gonna we're gonna change some jets in the carburetor and uh, see if we can get another pull out of it and make a thousand horsepower, right? Yeah. All right, we're just about finished up here making a jet change on the 327 at AMS. Um, these are the jets in front of you now. We went from a 66 jet in the front to a 71 and a 72 jet in the back to a 76. Now that's times two because we got two carburetors. So Colin and I are just finishing up here jetting these two carburetors. You can see them over there now working. The motor's cooled down, so what we'll do is we'll put the jets back in, check her for leaks, and we're going to make another pull to see how much horsepower this made. So these are Holly carburetors. They've been around forever, but a company called Quick Fuel uh, went over them and they idle on all four corners. Uh, they have adjustable air bleeds. They have clear sight glasses in the bowls for your fuel level. And uh, one of the tricks that we always did is you take the carburetors apart and put grease or, or uh, Vaseline on the gaskets. That way they don't stick and you can make a jet change like this. If anybody's ever made jet changes on a Holly, half of the time is taken scraping the old gasket off. But before you put fuel in them, when they're new, if you grease up the gaskets and put it together, they come apart without sticking, makes your job a lot easier. So Colin's wrapping up the jet change there and we'll be back in a minute. Denny's behind the control panel, and we're gonna see what we did, Denny. If we did it the right way, it should pick up horsepower. We went up, what, four jet sizes in front and back? No, actually, seven in the front, four in the back. Seven in the front, four in the back. So that's quite a bit, quite a bit of difference. So, as he sets up the screen, here we go for pool number two.
Well, there's pool number two. We still had a breaking up at about 6,900 RPMs, but we're going to see now how we made out on the horsepower and torque. It's roughly 82 degrees air temperature in the booth. Ooh, uh, it liked it. It liked it. Denny says it liked the, the, the riching in it up. 405, that's up what? What was it the first time, boys? 385. So that's like 20, 25 horsepower. And the torque? So the torque didn't go up as much as the horsepower. And the torque is the, just what it sounds like, the torque, the uh, low end uh, grunt that uh, makes the motor go, and then horsepower is more of a high-end thing. So that's what we're battling here, trying to get uh, both of them to increase. Like, like a big block Chevy has born with torque, uh, where the small block Chevy is more of the horsepower. So the trick is to try to get the torque and the horsepower up. And uh, all right, pool number two on the 327. Okay, uh, we just made another jet change because it liked the first one. We're even giving it more fuel. We're up to 74s in the primary jet and 83s in the rear jet. This 327, I, I don't know if I told you, it is being built for my race car, Big Red. Big Red was on the show several times, but for you viewers that didn't see it, it was uh, my wife's first car when she was 15. It was my first frame-up restoration in 1985. Uh, I restored the car just about my all by myself with the help of my father and uh, Ed Quay race cars did the roll bar and uh, Larry Roberts did the motor way back in the day in 1985 and from 1985 till 2010 it was strictly a race car so now we're gonna build this motor and put it in the car we're still gonna go racing but it's gonna be a little more tame and we're gonna run it on the street and make it street legal again so big red uh, you can check it out on our website on Wheels in Motion. Um, we have plenty of pictures of it at the shop if you stop in. And that's what this 327 Cross Ram is for. Okay, we're getting ready here to make the third pool. Here we go. Okay, if you want to look at the screen here, Gus, the RPMs are set at 2600. The torque is 1.9, 1.7, and uh, cubic feet per minute, would that be the bottom number? Is 1.0465. Uh, we're warming the motor up a little bit here. It's been sitting over lunchtime, and as soon as it's up to temperature, we're going to make our third pull.
Seven grand did it, guys. We got up to about 7,800 and smooth. So we're doing something right here. Let's see what the numbers are. Denny has to tell us. <laughs> a lot of numbers on that screen. But we'll figure it out in a minute. We'll give you the new horsepower and the torque for this killer 327 cross ram. to us and see if the timing made any difference. And ignition timing is pretty simple. It's the time of the spark in the cylinder. Uh, we had it at 40, now it's at 36. Quite the timing. You like the timing, Dan? Yep. Okay, so now we're in the machine shop portion of AMS. Uh, we're done for today on the dyno with Big Red's motor uh, being 410, the top horsepower. We're pleased with that. So now we're going to take a little tour of the machine shop. Uh, Denny and his wife started AMS in 1972 right here in this back area. And over the years, they expanded the business all the way out to the front area. But here's where it all started in the back. He's got a machine for everything. So let's take a shop tour and we'll show you some of the AMS machinery that uh, 
you know, machines, engines, anywhere from small blocks to four cylinders to uh, any type of machine work you would like. Whether it be a race motor or a stock motor, four cylinder V8, there's a lot of machining to be done. And here's where they do all the block work, the honing of the cylinders, the decking of the block. And these machines cost a lot of money. They're very accurate. It's to the hundreds, thousands of an inch. Um, and when you're especially doing a race motor, every little bit counts. So this area is where all the block work is done on the bottom end of the engine. This portion of this big machine shop is for the cylinder heads. Here's where all the valve jobs are done, uh, valve seats, uh, grinding the valves to fit. As you can see, this one cylinder head here had some damage done to it. Something came loose, nicked it all up. So they're probably going to clean that up if it's repairable. Uh, aluminum heads are pretty repairable. Stain or uh, cast iron heads, it's probably better just to buy a new one. And the valve seats get installed, which is this area. And the valve guides, which is down in there, they get replaced. And like I said, there's a lot of pieces to make an engine, whether it be stock or race. You know, the cylinder head surfaces need to be cleaned and resurfaced. Um, they have to be checked for cracks. Uh, everything has to be looked at with a fine tooth comb. And uh, the valve grinders right here, that's where you put the valves in. It's a quick way, the, the best in the market right here. And they put valves in, even new valves, and true them up to make sure they're perfectly round and perfectly seated. Okay, so now we're out front of AMS. Like I said, they started the machine business in 72 in the very back, and they eventually expanded all the way to the front on High Street. Besides machining, uh, years ago, I'm not sh quite sure how long, they got into the parts business, probably 35 years ago. Um, so they sell parts, brakes, ball joints, uh, spark plugs, tune-up stuff. Uh, a lot of the local garages use them for their excellent service. And the man behind the counter, Jeff Chumnuck. Jeff Chumnuck was on our show on PCTV, uh, Car Stories. And uh, he's the head man here that you would talk to if you're calling up and ordering parts. So let's go inside and talk to Jeff and uh, see what he's up to. Okay, so here we are at AMS in the, in the uh, parts department with Jeff Chumnuck. If you call here, this is the guy that answers the phone, except for when he's out to lunch, Joan answers the phone. So he's back now, and Jeff, uh, how long you been here? Uh, I've been here since 1980. Uh, the store opened six months before I got here, but I'm working on my 35th year now. Uh, we're pretty much a traditional wholesale uh, hard parts jobber. Um, with us, you're not a year make and model. If you have any problems or, you know, issues that, you know, you're having a hard time resolving or can't get, you know, that's what we're here for. We still do things the old-fashioned way at times. Uh, we have the computer in back of us, but we still have lots of old catalogs in back of me also that we use. So Right, and you sell pretty much anything automotive, uh, parts-wise? Uh, you have sources? Um, yeah, absolutely. Again, like I say, we're traditionally a traditional hard parts job or with that, you know, brakes, rotors, tune-up, you know, belts, hoses, you know, your general maintenance stuff on your car. As far as the custom stuff, we don't do a whole lot of that, but 90% right. um, of our business is wholesale, and, you know, that's where we, you know, strive to excel with the garages in the area, and, you know, you're do-it-yourselfers that, you know, like to do a good job with quality parts. Right, and, and the garages, you offer a, a delivery service. You have, a, I know you have a bunch of vans and drivers ready to come to the garages for, you know, their, their orders. Absolutely correct. That's, you know, what we, as I said, that's what we specialize in, um, right. you know, getting to the garages and the wholesale side of it. Again, you know, any do-it-yourself or a retail customer that wants to come in, we're glad to service them, mm -hmm. um, help them with all their needs there, but, uh, you know, basically what we do is, you know, the wholesale side of it. Okay. All right, Jeff. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. So if it's auto parts, auto machining, press work, uh, it goes on and on. Don't forget to give AMS a call, 323-2302. I know that one by heart. So uh, up here on High Street, I want to thank them for uh, Dino and my motor today and thanking the, everybody for making another Car Stories here on PCTV.